Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and the next video in the weapon series is going to be none other than Sephiroth. And I'm excited to do this one. It's going to be probably a little bit longer than most, and that's just because Sephiroth has a lot of weapons that I think are noteworthy. A lot of weapons in general. And I happen to have quite a few of them start up. Not really because I wishlisted a whole lot of them, but the game really liked to give them to me. Uh, Sephiroth is an extremely uh, nostalgic character for me in this game just because he was the first new character that was introduced. It was not long after the game uh, launched and it was just really awesome. And he was then featured on the Halloween banner and so I, there's just a lot of things going on. Getting into his weapons though, uh, I'm gonna kind of go in order and talk about which ones I think are noteworthy. The first one I have to acknowledge is Torn Wing. This was a free weapon, and I always find it interesting when I find a free weapon to be noteworthy because, you know, that's not what you really expect. But some free weapons are just so much more valuable than others, or came at a time when their usefulness was just better because we didn't have access to as many things as we do now. So. This was good because of two reasons. One, the boost attack. Honestly, it felt like the stats on this weapon were pretty nice for a long time and always kind of gave me a pretty good boost when I used it as a sub weapon. Physical defense was nice because in the beginning of the game, one of the ways you beat content was by surviving. And that's why debuffing was a really big deal, but also increasing your own magic or physical defense was a big thing. And sometimes even equipping this to use solid barrier one ally at a time uh, was a difference maker. And so for that reason, I, I have a fond memory of Torn Wing, and I think it's a noteworthy weapon. Nameless, uh, I'm not gonna go too much into Nameless, but I think it's very noteworthy for two reasons. One, Telluric Fury was a weapon that only took two ATB, and it gave a magic defense decrease, um, which was just really cool, okay? It, it came out right away, it was actually the free uh, five star weapon that they gave us, which made it also a little bit easier to star up. And the boost HP of 40, honestly, I used it a lot for that. And still, I don't think I've used it in quite a while because there's just so many better weapons now for that. But for a long time, I was even using it as a, as a sub weapon for HP because it was usually more start up because of the fact that you got free copies of it. Uh, Dark Heavens, this is one of my favorite Sephiroth weapons. It came out on Halloween or with the Halloween banner. And it was weird because Sephiroth's kit was primarily magic based. And then all of a sudden they're throwing a physical elemental weapon at us. And it, the, our abilities are physical attack. That made it very um, odd to maybe go for for some people. I'm sure some people skipped it because of that. I honestly went for it because I was excited it was one of the, like, I don't know, maybe like the third banner I pulled on in the game. And I really liked Sephiroth's costume. So I kind of just picked it up inadvertently going for stuff like the costume. Um, but in this last guild battle, I used it extensively. Sephiroth was my main guy. 800% physical wind damage is quite good. 50% higher than what we had in the beginning. So it was already starting to be a slight power creep for other elemental damage weapons. Uh, these R abilities at least went in line. They're nothing fancy, but <clears throat> it's got a sigil break. It's got everything you need. The stats are pretty decent. I mean, this physical attack stat, not really what we're seeing now, right? I would think that would be closer to like 670, 680, but uh, it's still a great weapon, still something I use, and win was always a weakness for me. So there was a period of time where I worked on this weapon a lot just because I needed to shore up that win. The next weapon here is as nostalgic as it gets. This was the featured banner weapon when Sephiroth came out, Edged Wings. And man, it hit hard. And the other thing I think that people remember from the beginning is, God, Sephiroth's attack animations took forever. Some people even thought it was like bugged or something or not meant to take that long. But it turns out uh, that's just how they made him. And, you know, we now actually also kind of judge on sometimes to a lower extent a weapon based on its attack animation. If we know, you know what that is before, you know, we start pulling or whatever. Uh, but 
Magic Attack plus 43, Ice Potency plus 39, and to my knowledge, I mean, he was pretty much the one that put Magic Attack and Magic Attack abilities on the map for us. Uh, it had an X Sigil boost, so, you know, everything you wanted. This was a phenomenal weapon. It still is. It's still the weapon I use when I'm building an Ice Sephiroth. I use it as a sub weapon quite often as well. It, it just, it's a, an amazing weapon. Shinra Blade Model 1. <laughs> I know it seems like I'm going through literally every weapon, but, you know, Sephiroth's kind of near and dear to me, and I do think a lot of his stuff is pretty good for different reasons. Uh, this one here, 940% magic non-elemental damage. It was one of the few weapons that had a magic non-elemental C ability, and for that reason, it stood out in case you needed to use it, at least at that time. This was kind of weird having a water potency in there. It had nothing to do with the weapon otherwise, but it was what it was. As far as our abilities, nothing super fancy, only really that C ability was noteworthy. Prototype Crimson Blade, extremely noteworthy uh, just as a fire weapon because, you know, 39 and 43, those went together really well. I still use this all the time in fire setups because of that attack boost. Uh, the actual C ability can be useful when you need an AoE, but otherwise, you know, you're not really excited to see that. Glare Reed, honestly, still noteworthy because one of the highest R abilities for boost limit break potency in the game. Other than that, not a whole lot I have to say about it. Radiant Edge, this came out at New Year's. It came out with the Cloud Banner for Fire. Uh, pretty interesting because it's got physical defense decrease as well as uh, Fire Breach on it. Although I actually don't really use it much for the Fire Breach because that's not really what I do with Sephiroth. You could, uh, especially because Kuja's Spirit Blade came out. That's another very, very, maybe his most noteworthy weapon ever at this point. Uh, I don't have it. I didn't even get it when it came back around, but it was the Final Fantasy IX banner. Um, and I know I've let Kuja's Spirit Blade overtake Radiant Edge here, but Kuja's Spirit Blade was an AoE attack that did like mid potency um, magic attack down all, and I think physical attack also. I mean, it was it was groundbreaking, um, meta defining for a lot of lineups. I just had to struggle without it, but it was an amazing weapon. It still is a quite amazing weapon. There are, I think, better weapons that have come out for other characters, but if you're using Sephiroth for utility, that one was a banger. <laughs> Uh, as far as this goes though, Radiant Edge is still, I think, definitely a good weapon. I use it more as a sub weapon, if I'm being honest. Uh, physical Attack is a pretty good R ability here. The Fire Potency is a little bit low, but I think that's because I don't have it at OB10. Yeah, so normally 6239, and that's pretty high for Physical Attack on the R ability. Uh, although not always as useful because, again, easier to max that out, but still, it, it's still good. It's got a fire boost, which is pretty nice, and the sigil boost. So this was a great weapon. I was very excited to get it, and I did um, put it on a wish list until I hit it OB6. The next one here, <laughs> Protector's Blade. This is another amazing uh, weapon. Six month anniversary came out. Everything that was on there was awesome, including this. I actually went with this. I prioritized it over every other weapon. The other magic weapon is just because this was Sephiroth and I already had him kind of set up for magic anyway. But as far as the R ability for boost magic attack all versus boost physical attack all, uh, the difference for me was I was just convinced at the time that magic was going to have its day, and I was weaker in magic in general, so that's why I picked this up. So far, I don't think magic has had its day. A uh, little bit of a miscue by me, but it is what it is. It's still an amazing weapon, a very, a very amazing sub weapon. This C ability is not bad, 740% magic damage to all enemies, and it actually goes up to 900%, but times 1.3 if you're doing it to a single enemy. Uh, that actually, I believe, believe, makes it the strongest magic non-elemental weapon in the game. I could be wrong, there could be something that's eclipsed that since then, but uh, nonetheless, it's still up there. CC Alloy Sword to me is interesting as a sub weapon because 52 is a very, very high R ability for an element. So Lightning Potency plus 52 to me makes this definitely worth seeking out as a sub weapon. Shinra Military Sword. 
This is the companion to Dark Heavens, although it didn't come out for much, much later. But uh, you can see here at OB10, Theatrical Strike is the ability. It only costs three ATB. Physical attack is increased, self, potency mid. And then starting at OB6, Wind Breach high. Very good, I use this a lot. Oh, well, I didn't use it quite, a, quite as much as you might think during the last guild battle. I think if I would have had it OB6, it would have been more useful, but I do not yet have it there. I have been wishlisting it for a long time to complete that wind setup. Uh, as far as our abilities go, another 52 for wind potency makes this very good as a sub weapon. But it also has a sigil break, just in case you wanted to main hand this. I don't know, some characters just get sigil breaks on everything, probably because they're a main character. Uh, Aonib I have a love-hate relationship with, or at least an interesting relationship with, because Frenzied Stance was an ability that everybody was really excited for. Uh, it's a self-buff, magic attack increase, it's mid-potency until you get to OB6, then it's potency high. Also gives you some regen and a small heal, which is pretty nice. In some content, before I'm about to kind of try to dunk on this weapon, in some content, this weapon, it was key. Okay, being able to, some of the crash battles, being able to buff yourself and not have your healer or somebody else do it was a big deal. Um, being able to, you know, cancel out magic attack debuffs was a big deal. Uh, so this weapon definitely has value uh, and I think it still has value for a lot of players. My big um, hang up with it was that I did some testing. There's a video on my page. If you find it, you might find it interesting, but I'll kind of sum it up. If you're using Frenzied Stance and it's not OB6 or better, like if you're literally using four ATB for a 36 second duration magic attack buff, that's only mid potency, uh, almost categorically, you will do less damage over the course of that buff than if you just did your main attack instead of using this, right? Because most main attacks take four ATB, so does this. Therefore, you were actually losing out on a little bit of damage. Now, at high potency, it, it switched. It still wasn't a ton more damage, but it was some, okay? Now, like I said, when it was necessary, like for canceling out debuffs or whatever, you had to have it. However, generally speaking, uh, I know that just so many players had no idea that like, because of this duration, right? You have to like let your bar fill all the way up, by the way, to, to even get it close. Use that and then you try to jam as many of your main attacks as you can before it runs out, you would actually do less damage if it wasn't high potency. So I've always found that weapon interesting for that reason. Uh, down here we have Tempest, and another weapon that I don't have, but is uh, pretty good. 700% uh, physical water damage, obviously a little bit on the low side, but a water breach, as long as your HP is 50% or higher, and it's high potency starting at OB6, the, our abilities are pretty pretty average for a weapon like, uh, well, for a general water DPS weapon. And, you know, obviously it would be extremely strong if these were higher uh, or if this was higher. Uh, it's still, still really good. However, um, just noting that, you know, 700% is a little on the low side, especially for modern stuff. And this came out, you know, it wasn't in the first six months. Uh, it's got a sigil break as well. Now, I've gone over uh, Kuja's Spirit Blade. I know that there are at least two other weapons for Sephiroth that I do not have. One of which was one I did kind of recently on a banner review. It's the Earth one that gives the Earth Breach and I think somewhere around 700% at max uh, Earth damage. I think that's a great weapon. It, again, it wasn't good enough for me to pull so close to Anniversary, but it is something that's worth noting because it is good. And the name of that weapon was Blue Bramble. I think that came out with Nightjar with Lucia on that banner. Um, it is a weapon that I would like to have, but you know, only so many resources. Anyway, uh, let me know if I forgot one. Um, quite a lot of weapons from Sephiroth here to go through. And honestly, like so many of them that have value. I guess just before I wrap it up completely, if I'm talking to somebody who's a newer player and I'm suggesting what you go for, because there's so many different weapons that I feel like can do so many things for your account, 
you really, really need to take stock in what you have and what role you think he'll fit in. I can tell you, for me, he's a DPS. I said he can be some utility, but I think still DPS is kind of where he's, I like, guess, bread and butter, so to speak. Um, I would be looking at some sort of elemental weapon, whether it was Dark Heavens, uh, Edged Wings, if you don't have it, uh, which if you're new, you might not. Um, these are still, I think, quite good. I think Radiant Edge is pretty good. Prototype Crimson Blade would probably be on like a second or maybe third tier for me, but uh, as a sub weapon, I think it's pretty good as well. And maybe a main weapon for Seth to do fire damage. Uh, something like CC Ally Sword as a sub weapon for lightning potency. Those are all viable candidates in my opinion. But I think, I think what I would be looking at mostly are these three. I would be looking at Radiant Edge, Edged Wings, and Dark Heavens, uh, because I would want to enable Sephiroth before I would be looking at uh, making a sub-weapon. But if you just don't like to play Sephiroth for whatever reason, then you could do something different. That's it. Thanks for watching.